Hi everyone, today my group is going to talk about the muscular system. And I will first introduce my group mates first. Me, Weng Lam, Zul, Ifaliana, and Zulfaham. So we distribute our presentation part into four parts today based on our learning outcomes. First, describe the microscopic and microscopic structure of a muscle fiber, which will be explained by me. And the second part, explain the molecular mechanism of muscle contraction will be explained by Zul. And the third part, three ways that muscle cells can generate ATP, which will be explained by Ifaliana. And the last part, explanation of the specific role of acetylcholine in stimulating a muscle fiber to contract, which will be explained by Zulfaham. Okay, so let's move on to our first topic today, which is the macroscopic and microscopic microscopic structure of muscle fiber. First of all, let's look at microscopic anatomy and physiology of muscle fiber. When I first say muscle, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Is it bicep, tricep, quadricep, abdomens? Yeah, they are all right. They are all microscopic structure of our muscle system. Then, when we have muscle, we have skeleton, how do we move? We need a structure called tendon. Tendon is a structure that attaches muscle to bone and skeletal muscles must work in antagonistic pairs which is when one muscle contract another muscle must relax and another muscle contract this one should be relaxed because muscle can only contract but they can't extend therefore muscle must work in antagonistic pairs. So that's all for macroscopic anatomy. We move on to microscopic anatomy. Let's have a look at this diagram. This shows the microscopic anatomy of muscle fiber. And you can understand this. This is what we can, we can see physically. So when we enlarge it, when we magnify it, what we can see is basically like this. So this is our muscle. A muscle contains bundles of muscle fibers. So in our muscle, we have a lot of bundles of muscle fiber. Imagine this is one bundle of muscle fiber, which is like this here. This is one bundle of muscle fiber. And one bundle of muscle fiber have a lot of muscle fiber. So in every one of muscle fiber, we have the smaller structure, which is called myofibril. Then, what are we going to see today is about the myofibril. Let's get a closer look. Okay, so this is one muscle fiber, which is like this one muscle fiber, and inside the muscle fiber has a lot of myofibril, and this is the magnified one part of one myofibril. So, in one muscle fiber, there are a lot of structural parts which consist of T tubule, sarcoplasmic reticulum, nucleus, sarcolemma mitochondrion and sarcoplasm so first we look at this first sarcolemma what is sarcolemma sarcolemma is specialized cell membrane which surrounds striated muscle fiber cells it is it is just like a membrane that surround the muscle fiber and we have sarcoplasmic reticulum so this is the membrane bound structure that is similar to the endoplasmic reticulum and its function is to store calcium ion when the muscle is not in contracting stage. So what is the sarcoplasmic reticulum actually? It is actually like the endoplasmic reticulum in the cell like uh, we have learned before that is the extended structure from the nucleus. So you can see here it is the extended part from the nucleus and it is like a network that cover the whole muscle fiber. Then, let's get a closer look at one myofibril only. So, what is myofibril? Myofibril is the contractile portion of a muscle fiber. How our muscle fiber, how our muscle fiber contract? It is all the work of myofibril. Myofibril gives the contraction to muscle fiber by how? So, you can see here, we have light and dark strains right 
this is how we call it muscle fiber as saturated, saturated muscle fiber. What is sarcomere? Sarcomere is the protein filaments within contractile units. So this is one contractile unit, which is one sarcomere between two Z line. This is the Z line. So in one sarcomere, we have two type of filaments, thick filament and thin filament. Thick filament is made out of myosin, which is this, the orange part, and the thin filaments are made out of actin. Actin is the red part here, over here. So this model we call it as sliding filament model. This model contributed contributed to the movement of actin filaments in relation to the myosin filaments. Why we call it a sliding filament model? Because this will slide past the thin filament when contract during contraction and this will be explained by one of our group mates. So as you can see when this contract it will move closer to each other and then the whole myofibril will contract muscle fiber will contract and our muscle will contract. So these are all the microscopic anatomy of muscle fiber and I will pass to Zhu to talk about the molecular mechanism of muscle contraction. Assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Juan Ali Zufika bin Wan Shukri. So today I will present to you guys about microscopic anatomy of muscle contraction, the mechanism of muscle contraction and also the function of calcium ion in muscle contraction so let's get to it so for the anatomy and physiology of muscle fiber the sarcoplasmic reticulum encases of thousands of myofibril which are the contractile, contractile portions of a muscle fiber so as we can see here, myofibril is cylindrical and it will run the length of the muscle fiber. Also, uh, we can see that the my myofibril has light and dark bands. It, it is called the striations. Uh, these striations are responsible for skeletal muscle striated appearance and the striations of my fibrils are formed by the placement of protein filaments within contractile units called the sarcoma this is the sarcoma sarcoma put, uh, it is a protein filaments within contractile units so sarcoma is basically uh, the the space between two Z lines okay and then uh, when we examine the sarcomas it extends between the two dark lines this one called the Z line and the thick filaments made up of myosin and thin filaments made up of actin so as we can see here the number one band here it is light in color as it is only actin filament and then the A band the dark regions of the A band uh, contain overlapping actin and myosin so it is thick and thin filaments here thick and thin filaments in the A band and in the H zone they have only myosin filaments Okay, the next is sliding filament model, which is the movement of actin filaments in relation to myosin filaments. So basically, when a sarcoma shortens, the actin or thin filaments will slide past the myosin, which is the thick filaments. And the H zone, this zone, will nearly disappear or completely disappear. And then during the sliding process, the sarcoma will be shortened 
and even though the filaments themselves will remain in the same length as we look in as we look into mechanism of muscle contraction there are four things which is the actin filaments calcium ions myosin filaments and atp actin filaments will slide past myosin causing the contraction of muscle and calcium ion are needed for myosin to bind to actin while myosin filaments will pull actin filaments by means of cross and atp will supply energy for the muscle contraction Assalamualaikum, my name is Ipa Dayana Bidi Selamat and I will talk about the use of ATP in muscle contraction. So there are three ways of muscles can generate ATP. So let's get started. So there are three ways muscle cells generate ATP. Firstly, by creating phosphate, a storage form of high energy phosphate. It cannot directly participate in muscle contraction. Therefore, it anaerobically regenerates ATP by following the reaction. Although muscle cell contains myoglobin, it does not immediately supply all the ATP. That's why it relies on mus it relies on creatine phosphate. It occurs in the midst of sliding filaments, and it is also the speediest energy source. So the reaction is creatine phosphate plus ADP producing ATP plus creatine. So when the creatine phosphate is depleted, mitochondria might maybe by then produce enough ATP. If not, fermentation, the second way, will occur. It is without consuming energy. It occurs when we start to do strenuous exercise to produce ATP in a short time and then lactate acid and lactate builds up the end product is lactic acid okay the last way is by cellular respiration it requires to complete the metabolism of lactate and restore cells to original energy state also known as oxygen depth oxygen depth means the amount of oxygen required to oxidize lactic acid Produce anaerobically during strenuous muscle activity. Maksudnya, lactic acid yang terhasil masa fermentation tadi, kita nak oksidaskan dia. So, we need oxygen. The amount of oxygen needed tu dipanggil uh, oxygen depth. Okay. Okay, so lactic is transported to the liver where 20% of it is broken down to carbon dioxide and water. The ATP gain is used to reconvert 80% of the lactate to glucose. So, there is no more lactic acid. Okay, for special case, the person who re exercise regularly, like athletes, uh, the number of mitochondria increases and there will be no fermentation because they will for rely on mitochondria. So, there will be less lactate and less oxygen produced. Less oxygen depth produced. Okay, so for so that's all for muscle cells. The ways muscle cells generate ATP. So, kita ulang balik. The first one is creating phosphate. The speediest energy source available. So the second one fermentation. Fermentation ni berlaku bila kita start buat aktiviti lasak yang memerlukan oksigen dengan cepat. So that's why fermentation will occur. Tapi akhir dia ada lactic acid. So okay, batu nanti ada oksigen depth. So the last one is aerobic cellular respiration. Kita nak oksidaiskan balik a uh, lactic acid tu. Sebab itulah adanya cellular respiration ni. Okay, lepas tu uh, last one yang exercise regularly tu Number of mitochondria will increase That's all from me Thank you, I will pass to Zul Farhan For the next slide Thank you Thank you Ifa So now I will explain the role of acetylcholine in muscle innovation So let's go So firstly in muscle innovation Muscles are stimulated to contract by motor nerve fibers 
in nerve fibers there are several branches where at the end of the nerve fibers there is an axon terminal which is very close to sarcolemma of a muscle fiber next there is an area called synaptic cleft which separates the axon terminal from the sarcolemma and the entire region of this area is called neuromuscular junction later i will show you an image of this neuromuscular junction and lastly axon terminals contain synaptic vesicles which fill with neurotransmitter called acetylcholine or in short ACH so, th so this is the process of muscle intervention firstly the nerve from nerve impulses from spinal cord or the brain will travel down a motor neuron and arrive at, at the axon terminal Next, the synaptic vesicles release acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. So this is the picture of the this is axon terminal, and this part here, this whole part here is called neuromuscular junction. So, the synaptic vesicles release acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. So here is the synaptic vesicle and the green. Sphere, the green sphere is here is acetylcholine, and here it will, uh, the synaptic vesicle will release acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. And next, acetylcholine will quickly diffuse across the cleft and binds to receptors in the sarcolemma. So, the sarcolemma is the this one is the sarcolemma, the white one. and it will bind to the receptors and this is the orange part here is the uh, acetylcholine receptors so the acetylcholine will bind to the acetylcholine receptors at the sarcolemma next the sarcolemma generates impulses to the sarcoplasmic reticulum after that calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum is released uh, where well, uh, this calcium is important in muscle contraction which will be explained later and the filaments in sacromeres slide past one another after that sacromere contraction results in myofibril contraction and because of this myofibril contraction it will result in muscle fiber will contract thus muscle will contract So this is the picture of axon terminal and this is the synaptic vesicle, synaptic cleft and this is the sarcolemma and the acetylcholine receptor. So once a neurotransmitter has been released into a neuromuscular junction and has initiated a response, it is removed from a junction. So acetylcholine is one of a neurotransmitter so how will as acetic this acetylcholine be removed from the junction it will be removed by an enzyme called acetylcholine esterase which in short ache where it will break down acetylcholine when there's no more acetylcholine so the muscle contraction ceases this means that the muscle will become relaxed so if we look at this picture, this blue triangle is acetylcholine esterase. So this enzyme will break down the acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft after the acetylcholine has done its work. So now I will pass to Zol. Now we're gonna look at the function of calcium in muscle contraction. After calcium ion released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it will combine with troponin. And after binding, tropomyosin threads shift their position and myosin binding sites are exposed. As we can look at it here, the calcium, the calcium has uh, released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum combined with troponin here and the myosin binding sites has been exposed 
Next, the ADP and P remain on myosin heads until the head attaches to actin, forming cross bridges. As we can look at here, ADP and P, the triangle one, are bound to myosin and attached to this one actin. So this is the cross bridge. Next, when ADP and P are released, the cross bridge will change their position. Uh, and here we can see after the ADP and P release, the head change and move, and the actin filament will move towards the 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 ADP and P. Next one, after the more ATP molecules bind to myosin heads, cross bridges are broken as the heads detach from actin. So binding of ATP will causes myosin head to return to resting position and actin filaments will move nearer to the center this actin filament will move near to the center of of sarcoma each time the cycle each time this cycle is repeated the actin filament will move nearer and nearer to the sarcomere sac, sac,